Hello and good afternoon to all the uh, attendants to this 11th meeting of our Committee on Tourism and Sustainability uh, in the city of Madrid. I would like to welcome all of you and uh, particularly all the members of this committee and uh, special speakers for this afternoon. As I would like to ask um, our team to show the proposed agenda on the screen so that we can begin our, our journey for today. That's the provisional agenda, which we are submitting to consideration of the members of the committee. Uh, I would like to note that we've been informed that the item number two, which are the welcome remarks of the Secretary General of UNWTO, will not be possible, as uh, he is still not in this room. So if uh, members of the committee agree, we would remove this item from the agenda and continue, continue with uh, the proposed uh, items for today. If no further comments, then we will move on uh, as such. I'm very pleased to welcome all of you to this public meeting of the UNWTO Committee on so Tourism and Sustainability. This is the 11th meeting after having met the last time in Chengdu on the occasion of the General Assembly. After last year's success of the first public meeting, we wish to continue this tradition, so that's why we are here today. What is new is the live streaming that uh, we have today for our meeting, so uh, we hope a lot of uh, other audience are following us through the internet and this way our message will continue to, to, to get further and further, which is very important for our objectives. Uh, this public meeting aims at bringing the work of the committee to the attention of a wider public within the framework of the International Tourism Fair Fitur organized by IFEMA. Allow me to explain the role of the Committee on, Sustain on Tourism and Sustainability. The CTS is a consultation mechanism role, our first stop to interface with countries on issues of sustainability. The functions of this committee, we could uh, call them as subsidiary organ of the Executive Council and reports to it. The members are elected by the regional commission meetings after having expressed their interest to serve on the CTS to advise and guide the Secretariat in the field of sustainable tourism. It's a four years mandate, which is the current one running from 2015 to 2019. Members of this committee are countries of Bhutan, China, Colombia, Honduras, Lithuania, Montenegro, Morocco, Oman, and Senegal. As we advance with our meeting, I welcome the fellow countries that are part of this, of this table. Regarding the area of work of this committee, uh, we would like to mention as uh, some of the main ones, advancing sustainable and resilient tourism development. Also supporting the implementation of the program of work of sustainable development of tourism. Strengthening the normative role of, for the Secretariat's work in the area of SDT, recommendations to the Executive Council and other bodies. The, the objective of today's meeting is to present on, the one, on one hand an overview of work accomplished in various actions areas of the sustainable development of tourism and it its contribution to 2030 sustainable development agenda and at the same time present to you the major lines of work ahead of us. Though this special agenda, the CTS provides an opportunity to discuss and better comprehend these realities while providing an interactive forum to discuss future actions. Another and very important of uh, our task is to encourage the audience to participate actively during the open debate at the end of this meeting. So we hope that you will uh, write down your questions or, or any suggestions or comments uh, because we are interested in hearing from you at the end of the meeting. So I'm very pleased to welcome and introduce those present at this table, and our panelists and their role. First of all, we have Ms. Ana Mendez Godinho, 
Secretary of State for Tourism. Nope. She's not here? No. Nope. Okay. changed. Oh, there's a change, yes. And it's Carlos Romero. Carlos Romero from Secretary. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Thank you to the Secretariat. We welcome Mr. Carlos Romero, Manager of the Directorate for Research, Development and Tourism Innovation at the state company. He's, he's even higher. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm lowering his rank as I've heard, but <laughs> we welcome Mr. Carlos Romero for being here with us from uh, Tegitur. He's responsible for promoting innovation in the Spanish tourism industry in both the public and the private sector. Ms. Maria Teresa Solis, Undersecretary for Policy and Tourism Planning of the Mexico's Federal Secretariat of Tourism, Sectur, since April 2016. She's a specialist, among others, in the development of tourism destinations in emerging economies in marketing and tourist product development. Mr. Luis Araujo, President of Turismo de Portugal. He holds a degree in law and before joining Turismo de Portugal, was a member of the Pestana Group's Executive Committee, responsible for the operations in Latin America as well for Sustainability Department since 29. And uh, members of the committee are the Republic of China, represented by Mr. Liu Gang, Deputy Director of CNTA, Madrid office. Lithuania, Dr. Renalda Siusas, Head of Tourism Policy Division of the Ministry of Economy. Morocco is, Morocco is not here with us, but this will, will be represented by Abderrahman Talawi, Economic Counselor of the Embassy of Morocco in Spain. Uh, the representative of the affiliate members of UNWTO, Mrs. Maricruz Cadiz, she's Technical Director of the Institute for Spanish Tourism Quality, ICTE. Also, Colombia. Uh, speaking with you, I'm Sandra Howard, I'm the Vice Minister of Tourism of the Ministry of Commerce, Industry and Tourism of Colombia. So now I uh, would like to pass the floor to the UNWTO Secretariat to introduce agenda item number seven, Mr. Four. Dirk, four, Dirk Gleeser. Thank you, Madam Chair. As you all know, in 2017, we celebrated the international year of sustainable tourism for development which was um, in late 2015 uh, declared by the UN General Assembly. Um, tourism was celebrated widely around the world. Many initiatives took place to bring that back to you and in the right format here. Um, there is a short video which we would like to show you. It was shown for the first time in December last year when we concluded the celebrations of the international year. Let's watch now the video on the activities conducted in 2017. around the world to countries that are doing a great job at sustainable tourism. 
and I'm so excited to share my journey with you. Thank you very much. As you saw, um, this international year was really an extraordinary success. Uh, we congratulate uh, sincerely all those in front and behind the scenes that uh, made this very tight agenda that we carry through a, a true success and the amount of people that got involved and um, spreading the world of the importance of tourism to make our big, small communities a better place for all, I think was one of the main uh, things that we can really highlight from a, a year of hard work. So congratulations to the entire team. And um, this is a success of this whole tourism community around the world. And of course, the agenda that we'll be following through this evening, this afternoon, has a lot to do with the uh, SDGs and um, all the commitments that we have towards the future. So um, as one of the very important milestones will be the high level political forum on sustainable development taking place in New York from the, uh, Monday 9th of July to Wednesday 18th of July 2018. And the preparations for this meeting convened under the auspices of the UN Economic and Social Council have already started I wish to pass on the floor to the Secretariat to explain us briefly what happened so far and uh, what is ahead of us in technical terms of this meeting. Please, Mr. Please. Thank you, Madam Chair. The high-level political forum is for us uh, and for our member states and for the tourism sector of special importance. Um, as you know, in 2018, we have the third year of the uh, uh, implementation of the SDG objectives. And in this context, understanding better the links of these objectives and what is actually happening in the reporting was of special concern for the Secretariat to bring that to the committee members and to the wider public. What does it mean? Because the SDGs as such uh, are very often not fully seen in this context and that is necessary to uh, improve. Governments basically hold the responsibility for developing policies and delivering the necessary resources to implement those policies. At the same time, in the framework of the SDGs, and that is the point I referred to before, there's a reporting mechanism. And this reporting mechanism actually is taking place and ending in the high-level political forum, which is conducted on an, annual, on an annual basis. The progress, as such, will be reported in voluntary national reviews. As you see on this slide here, in 2016, 22 voluntary national reports were submitted and discussed. In 2017, the number nearly doubled. 43 countries voluntarily reported on the implementation, the opportunities and the challenges they have seen when implementing the SDGs. Now we are preparing for 2018. So it is interesting to bring to the committee members and the public the way how that could happen. We look back and we see here the VNR's voluntary national reviews analyzed in 2017 in the way how the reporting took place. Although there are guidelines existing suggesting the mechanism on suggesting the format of the reporting, what we see here is that one third of the countries submitting their report, their review, did that on all 17 SDGs. Another 13, well, one third of the countries actually 
only highlighted and focused on the SDGs which were actually under review for that particular year. We will explain that in a second more in depth. And what you see then as the last chart over here, other countries actually reported on goals of their own choice. What that shows is there was no uniform way of reporting on the SDGs specific implementation. Now understanding the process better, we wanted to highlight to you how the roadmap in 2017 unfolded. It started the December, the year before, when an expert group met. Then it was taken to regional meetings, which took place, and which took place in the format of regional fora on the sustainable development. Finally, in June was the deadline to submit the VNRs, and actually the meeting in 2017, the in-person meeting took place in July. On this slide, you see the thematic review for 2018, which is focusing on transformation towards sustainable and resilient societies. Countries are invited to report in that framework, as well as the SDGs, which are here under specific review, SDG 6, 7, 11, 12, 15, and 17. This is ahead of us, and we encourage member states, we encourage the committee to participate actively in this process. And with that, Madam Chair, I thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary. And uh, for this update, definitely it's very important to see what's uh, taking place. And also for preparing the high-level political forum on sustainable development and the review mechan mechanism of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. We, as governments, uh, civil society, businesses, and the wider public, need to create awareness among all stakeholders on this. Because after all, implementation of the 2030 agenda requires meaningful engagement of all countries and all people collaborating in partnership. Given that countries in 2018 will already be in the year three of the implementation of the 2030 agenda, governments are expected to report on the actions and measures taken to advance the implementation of the 2030 agenda and SDGs and where available to provide also information on the progress made. This means uh, taking about, talking about baselines, the strategies and policies that are being put in place to facilitate the implementation, but it is, it is also expected that countries will begin to share progress and accomplishments, as well as the gaps and lessons learned related to the implementation on the 2030 agenda. We already heard that the reports from the countries was not made in a uniform way. It's so uh, the majority reported on certain goals that, was, that were more relevant to, to what was happening internally. And um, uh, well, this really indicated several findings. The first, that the importance of reporting to identify critical issues on our way towards more sustainable societies is really critical. Uh, second, that the SDGs process is fast evolving and it is uh, of enormous catalytic importance. And third, the report shows that they are often linking into existing national frameworks but also extending the scope of actions. So now we uh, will move on to the next uh, agenda item, which will expand on the preparations for the HLPF and findings of the ongoing research. I wish to invite committee members here and also the present experts, if they have any comments on what we've been seeing so far. So 
if uh, any of the members of the committee would like to express uh, any of their comments about the, the, the way we, we, we can coordinate this at the institutional level, for example, or how different governments or ministries are implementing the, the monitoring of, of these uh, SDGs being implemented in each country. This is the moment to, to share with the public and also with those that are following us uh, through the streaming. Well, if there are no comments, <laughs> we, will, we will move on to uh, the next point on our agenda, which is an update on the integration of sustainable consumption and production what we call SCP, into national tourism policies and recommendations for action. As it was mentioned under the previous agenda item, the in-depth review will focus on SDG 12 to ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. As committee members are aware, the concept of sustainable consumption and production links all SDGs as it aims increasing and accelerating resource efficiency and sustainable practices for the industry as well as for the consumers. So its implementation thus helps to advance towards low carbon, circular and green economies. This is a highly relevant item, item for the tourism sector. Tourism exponential growth comes with the opportunity to achieve multiplier positive effects using the sector as an enabling agent of change at all levels of its transversal value chain. But it also comes with a high responsibility to decouple growth from the use of natural resources, which are also the foundation of the sector's competitiveness. UNWTO has been focusing on integrating sustainable consumption and production practices in the tourism sector since late 2014, when the organization was appointed as the lead of the sustainable tourism program of the 10-year framework of programs on sustainable consumption and production, which is an implementation mechanism for SDG 12. Within that framework, research on the integration of sustainable consumption and production into national policies has been ongoing for the past year with new interesting findings progressively appearing along the way. During the past two sessions of the committee, we had the opportunity to review preliminary findings related to the way in which long-term planning is being developed in the tourism sector, the main thematic elements of policies and the references they make to concepts such as resource efficiency, sustainable land use, diversity, biodiversity protection, water use efficiency, energy use efficiency, the waste reduction, or GHG emissions. As you will see in a minute, there is also an interesting link between this research, the voluntary national reviews, and existing national frameworks. I would now like to invite the UNW Secretariat and UNWTO Secretariat to share with us the latest progress of this project, particularly in view of the guidance that tourism policymakers may be able to draw from it with regards to the upcoming review of SDG 12, among other SDGs this month of July in the high-level uh, meeting. So I give, I give the floor to the Secretariat. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, distinguished committee members, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Virginia Trapa, and it is a pleasure to have the opportunity to share with you some of the latest findings of our work linking sustainable consumption and production with uh, national tourism policies. As it was highlighted previously um, in the previous agenda point, the connection between uh, SDG 12 and the uh, tourism sector is clear. The tourism sector must work on decoupling its growth from the use of finite natural resources in order to develop sustainably. In turn, decoupling can entail opportunities to embrace innovation and enhance the competitiveness of destinations. SDG 12 is one of the three goals containing a target which explicitly refers to tourism, in particular to the monitoring of the sustainable development impacts of the sector. 
And uh, as the chair just mentioned, UNWTO is leading the sustainable tourism program of the 10-year framework of programs on sustainable consumption and production, together with France, Morocco, the Republic of Korea, and UN Environment, in addition to 120 um, proactive organizations are also participating. This program is, as said, an implementation mechanism for SDG 12, and it actually reports to the high-level political forum on an annual basis. As we have um, heard earlier today, the national reporting on the SDGs has, for the time being, had a flexible structure, and yet many of the countries engaging in this process have chosen to uh, include reference to SDG 12 in their reports, to be precise, 72% of them. Uh, the majority of countries also have made reference to tourism in their voluntary national reviews, that 70%. But most importantly for our objective to analyze the convergence of SDG 12 with uh, tourism, we found that over 55% of the countries engaging in the preparation of voluntary national reviews um, actually referred both to SDG 12 and tourism as part of their endeavor to implement the Agenda 2030. Although um, they did not make a direct connection between SDG 12 and tourism, a smaller but still relevant group of 23% of the countries did so. Um, it, shall be, it shall be noted that this last grouping of 23% of the countries uh, is composed of over 65% of countries that have a contribution to uh, their GDP from tourism being notably higher than the global average. Their voluntary national reviews, for example, make reference to tourism as one of the priority sectors to implement uh, broader national policies, such as green growth policies or national consumption and production plans or national schemes for sustainability certification. In order to better understand the link between the voluntary national reviews and national frameworks of tourism, we compared some of the findings with our ongoing research on sustainable consumption and production and national tourism policies, which as committee members are aware, has reviewed the tourism policies of 65% of UNOTO member states. While every tourism policy reviewed uh, includes reference to sustainability, notably as part of the objectives or overall vision, references to environmental concepts uh, such as resource efficiency, which is uh, the main underlying idea behind SDG 12, are present in 69% of the policies, the tourism policies. It appears that those countries first engaging in the preparation of voluntary national reviews show a slightly higher commitment to resource efficiency in their tourism plans or policies than the overall sample of member states analyzed in the research. Moreover, when looking a bit more in detail at the presence within national tourism policies, uh, policies of elements of common concern of sustainable consumption and production, such as uh, water and energy efficiency, waste and emissions reduction, and biodiversity protection, we observed that, again, the group of countries linking directly SDG 12 with tourism in their voluntary national review reports was slightly stronger than the overall sample, with 60% of countries prioritizing these issues in their national tourism policy. On the one hand, this could suggest a good level of awareness among these countries on the challenges for the tourism sector in terms of resource efficiency. On the other, it points out uh, at the opportunity for tourism policymakers to use the national reporting on the SDGs to leverage the potential of tourism to advance SDG 12. Providing the necessary evidence on the implementation of SDG 12 by the tourism sector remains nevertheless a challenge ahead of us. When analyzing the national tourism policies of our member states, references to action plans to roll out the implementation were found in 67% of the policies. And monitoring instruments, such as key performance indicators focusing specifically on sustainability issues, were referred to in 54% of the national policies. However, one of the main limitations of the study was to find proof of the effective implementation of the action plans and the use of these sustainability indicators. As the few progress reports uh, found public, uh, publicly available online were rarely going beyond the description of the execution of budgetary lines. In conclusion, as SDG 12 uh, is this year upon review at the high level political forum, we would like to encourage policymakers, tourism policymakers, to make good use of the opportunity to feature some of the evidence they may have available on the role of our sector in this regard. And when the data is not available, this occasion may be ideal to commit to developing the necessary tools to start measuring.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much on this report. Uh, no, as we address uh, the relevance of policies and actions to accelerate sustainability, let's focus on another uh, that is a crucial element without which acceleration and prioritization is not possible. Uh, we refer to the need to monitor with reliable, timely, accessible, and uh, sufficiently disaggregated data. This was uh, one of the major objectives of the first World Conference on Smart Destinations, which UNWTO organized with the government of Spain and is currently preparing for 2018. So I invite now Mr. Carlos Romero, who's research director of the State Company for Tourism Technology and Innovation Manage uh, Management, Segitur, of Spain, to brief us on the relevance of the Smart Destinations concept. Mr. Romero. Good afternoon. Um, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, um, distinguished audience, uh, friends and colleagues. Uh, um, well, here in Spain, tourism um, moves more than uh, 80 million international um, uh, tourist visitors on a yearly basis, uh, to which um, we have to add it, uh, uh, another 100 million uh, uh, residents in Spain moving around uh, uh, our destinations um, who also take their, their vacations in, in, in Spain. Uh, the economic impact of, of the industry as a whole in Spain uh, represents over 11% of the uh, uh, gross domestic product and uh, practically um, one uh, of every 10 jobs in Spain uh, has to do with with tourism. So, as as you could imagine, it is critical for Spain uh, to understand the impacts of tourism, uh, not only from an economic point of view, but also from the point of view of uh, sustainability. No? And sustainability, it is on the uh, uh, tourism agenda uh, since uh, a long time in 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 Spain. Um, uh, we, we don't have figures about the uh, impact of the um, uh, emissions of uh, greenhouse gases of tourism uh, activity in, in Spain, but worldwide uh, it is estimated that 5% of global emissions of uh, greenhouse gases um, uh, are part, are related with the tourism industry, a uh, percentage that uh, rises to 12.4% uh, uh, according to the UN uh, Environment Programme, if we have account the energy used in hotels and food and, and, and restaurants. Um, other important data are those related to uh, water, water consumption. In, in Europe, a tourist uh, consumes more water when uh, on vacation than at home, and those who opt for uh, luxury hotels use up to three times more water due, due to swimming pools, golf courses, uh, and, and, and due to the uh, regular activities that they do at the, at the destinations while they are traveling. Uh, to this must be added the generated waste by those uh, tourists, uh, the overfishing also in some uh, Spanish um, uh, control coral areas, uh, the loss to be also of uh, fauna and flora in some national parks around Spain, uh, and the impacts also in, in, in our uh, traditional Spanish uh, culture and, and, and local communities. All these figures and all those uh, facts show that uh, the need to manage the, the, not only the positive but also the negative impacts that flows of this um, magnitude generated on the environment, resources, and communities. As a transversal uh, economic sector, tourism has developed supply chains and interlinkages uh, with other sectors, uh, which can be used to systematically encourage, and in some cases, discourage sustainable operations uh, beyond the sector. No? Uh, 
uh, it is trying to get involved in this process of uh, supporting uh, sustainability, other actors related with the uh, tourism industry. Tourism, like no other sector, involves direct human interaction, often motivated by the searching of authentic experiences and the interest in learning and discovering new things. The personal nature of tourism means that the sector can have profound influence, uh, even down to the individual level, triggering more sustainable travel behavior and in turn more sustainable lifestyles. Sustainability in Spain and for the uh, uh, Spanish Tourism Administration has become an essential aspect in which all actors in the Spanish tourism sector, governments, companies and tourists, have a role to play and that must be translated into concrete and effective actions. Sustainable tourism goes through the effective planning of sustainability, the maximization of economic and social benefits for the local community, the reduction of negative impacts on cultural, uh, cultural heritage and the reduction of negative impacts on the environment. The objective of our strategy in Spain is to make destinations and tourist companies sustainable, guaranteeing the traveler the experience of unique experiences, valuing and protecting the culture, improving the local economy, making the business profitable, uh, all over the year, fighting against seasonality, redistributing the tourism flows, uh, which are most of them concentrated in very specific areas of Spain in the coast, and uh, uh, boost our cultural enrichment. Uh, of course, the tourism development in a rational way, in the way we are trying to do it, can contribute to the promotion of new, non-aggressive, tourism models based on new uh, niche tourism products and services. Uh, to do so, public-private collaboration is essential for the uh, implementation of actions that promote more sustainability and responsible tourism, which could, could contribute to, uh, to uh, uh, deploy our strategy. Aware of these uh, needs, in 2015, the Spanish uh, Network of the Global Compact and the uh, UNWTO signed an agreement to try to integrate uh, companies in the Spanish tourism sector. And Segitur is also my company part of this uh, uh, agreement uh, into corporate social responsibility initiatives, which contribute to the uh, achievement of the uh, sustainable development goals uh, defined by the United Nations. The initiative that Spanish companies have launched range from uh, employment, uh, pro, um, uh, the environment, production and sustainable consumption uh, to alliances uh, with, with cities and with different actors uh, of the uh, Spanish supply, supply, supply chain. Initiatives that involve promoting the hiring of uh, young people from uh, local communities where companies are located. We have a good example with the uh, hotel chain Paradores, uh, 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 hiring these uh, local people and uh, getting involved, those hotels, national hotels, with the uh, local communities. Uh, promoting also awareness among travelers to convert sustainability into an attribute uh, of the destinations, into a value, uh, implementing uh, equality policies, uh, establishing energy saving measures or promoting alliances uh, that contribute to achieving the uh, Millennium Goals. The sector, uh, the tourism sector in Spain is aware that these initiatives contribute to promoting sustainability as a factor not only of uh, positioning and differentiation but also as a factor, as a way to improve our competitiveness both for companies and for destinations. For its part, and it is something that has, uh, uh, in which uh, Sejitur has been involved uh, in the last four years, the Spanish Tourism Administration has contributed to a pioneering project uh, uh, called uh, Smart Tourism Destinations, where sustainability, along with uh, uh, other elements of the destinations, such as innovation, technology, accessibility, and good governance, 
uh, are the uh, the uh, uh, major players of a new model of tourism development. The, uh, the World Tourism Organization defines uh, sustainable tourism as the one that meets the present needs of regions and tourists, protecting and improving future opportunities of all the stakeholders uh, and residents of those destinations. In addition to being focused on the management of uh, resources to, the meet, to meet the economic, social and respect for cultural integrity and biological diversity, uh, we've been working in, in, different, in different areas. Uh, in the in the uh, case of uh, tourist destinations, uh, working under the uh, methodology of smart destinations, uh, we we try to achieve a balance between uh, development and growth and, and sustainability. Uh, it is necessary, from our point of view, to take a series of measures at the energy, environmental cultural and economic levels with the aim of increasing the quality of life of the local population, improving at the same time the visitor experience and protecting the environment. Thus, it is uh, necessary to begin to analyze sustainability from different perspectives. That of the local entrepreneurs who requires economically sustainable business models, and we have launched a specific program to boost uh, our entrepreneurs in, in, in Spain, during the last five years, we have invested over 80 million euros in supporting over 300 uh, companies, startups in the field of uh, tourism and new technologies. Uh, uh, but, but also um, uh, the cultural, the needs to create new strategies of immersion of the visitor, both in the traditions and in the history of each region, without negatively affecting them. And we have launched a specific section on our promotional portal, uh, uh, spain.info, uh, to promote um, uh, experiences, tourism experiences around Spain, uh, provided by local and small, uh, small and medium enterprises of the tourism sector, uh, and to help them to be present online. Um, um, of course, that tourism needs to move uh, away from what we call the a linear economic model, that it is uh, resource intense and unsustainable towards a more what we call and what the, Uni the European Commission uh, call the circular approach, where the value of products, materials and resources is maintained in the economy for as long as possible and the generation of waste minimized. This transition is an essential requirement to ensure sustainable tourism in Spain, low carbon, resource efficient, and a competitive tourism sector. Getting, okay, okay, um, yeah. Uh, uh, getting maximum value from, from tourism resources requires action uh, at all stages of the life cycle of tourism products and destinations. And the Smart Destination Initiative is a great opportunity to align Spanish destinations with the current EU circular economy package adopted by the European Commission two years ago. We are talking about reducing waste, protecting the environment, but also about a profound transformation of the way our entire economy works by rethinking the way we produce, work, and buy in our destinations, we can generate new opportunities and create new jobs and to improve tourism sustainability as one of the biggest worldwide industries. Uh, in, in the case of, of Spain, uh, the project of smart destinations uh, nowadays involves over 14, 15 destinations uh, from very different typologies. And with all of them, we are working in this uh, sustainable agenda, but linked to the smart destinations. Uh, Somehow, we believe that we are assisting the creation of a kind of new tourism model of the 21st century. And for this, the business sector, the public administrations, local entities, and agents, technology centers, and universities must coordinate and collaborate to achieve a much more ambitious goal uh, under what we call the agenda of the smart destinations. Just a final uh, remark to conclude, I would like 
you to I would like to invite you to all the participants here uh, to join us and to participate in the second world Congress of the UNWTO on Intelligent Tourism Destinations to be held in the city of Oviedo in, in Spain uh, next June. Uh, and you're very welcome to attend the different sessions. And we will deal specifically uh, with, uh, in a couple of sessions, with the issue of sustainability and circular economy. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Romero. And uh, of course, we're looking forward to this uh, following meeting on smart destinations. I would like uh, to invite now uh, Mr. Luis Araujo, President of uh, Turismo de Portugal, who will present uh, the strategy and efforts that Portugal is making to be in pole position of international tourism and uh, asserts its place as one of the most sustainable tourism uh, sectors worldwide. Mr. Araujo. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Um, I will try to give you a brief overview of what Portugal is doing now and why do we think this is so important for our country. Uh, like most of the main tourism destinations, Portugal is facing many challenges to, to remain a competitive destination. The first one has to deal with change. Uh, change in terms of consumer behavior, new segments, new clients, new business models, the need for continuous uh, innovation that we always hear and that we always have to, to fulfill. Um, so how to do it? How to remain competitive while promoting tourism? How to preserve the natural and cultural resources and the authenticity of the destinations? Uh, and at the same time, create quality jobs and develop the country uh, and see a sector, tourism sector, that is so important for our activity. Just to give you an example, Portugal, uh, Portuguese tourism represents 18% of our exports, of our total exports. It's the main uh, sector developing the Portuguese economy. So we feel uh, a big responsibility. Um, but we can't just sleep under the good results, and we've had very good results. Just this year, 2017, we've grown around 10% the number of tourists and 16% the revenues of all our companies in Portugal, the, the tourism receipts. So it's important to settle a strategy, and we've decided to do that last year. During 2016, we had almost eight months of discussion, internal discussion, all around the territory, asking people, what do you want for the next 10 years? What kind of tourism do you want for the next 10 years? What should we develop? Um, and we've launched um, a strategy called uh, Tourism Strategy 2027 for the next 10 years. Uh, and the motto is very simple, to lead the tourism of the future. And we believe the tourism of the future has its core in sustainability. So sustainability and tourism go together in Portugal from now on. Uh, and lead the tourism of the future means to position Portugal, of course, as a su sustainable destination, um, but also a destination uh, to visit, to invest, to live, to study, a bigger broad of tourism, a bigger broad of promotion uh, of our country. So we've decided to affirm uh, tourism as a hub for economic development, and I will tell you the goals that we aim for the next 10 years, uh, but also um, as a social uh, and environmental development through the territory, uh, as I told you, positioning Portugal as one of the most competitive and sustainable tourism destinations in the world. How? Well, focusing in Portugal as a sustainable destination, but also as a cohesive territory. Uh, we're working a lot the regions of Portugal which are not so well known. So Portugal is not only Lisbon and Porto and Madeira and the Algarve. Um, an innovative and competitive destination a destination where work is valued, uh, and I think this is a very important point, uh, a country that invests in people, in their qualifications, professional values, uh, and attracts talent. Um, and most of all, an inclusive country. Uh, in an era that uh, many countries decide to build walls, we think that our paper, uh, and Portugal paper, and I think UNWTO, uh, agrees with this is building bridges. So we believe 
in this building bridges through uh, tourism. Um, but the most important is that we, put pip, uh, we have put people uh, at the core of the strategy. Um, and this was very interesting because after these eight months of discussion and the strategy were, was launched beginning of 2017, um, this was a common uh, answer in all laboratories we did in all discussions. People have to be in the center of strategy. Thinking of sustainability without thinking of people is nothing. Um, and we've decided to put three kinds of people, tourists, locals, and workers, people that work for tourism. So these are the three uh, segments and the three kinds of people that we have attracted and we are directioning uh, all our strategy. Five axes, value the territory, boosting the economy, promoting knowledge, generating networks and connectivity, and of course, highlighting Portugal. Uh, Portugal as a place, as we say, all for all, that doesn't discriminate, that receives everyone at this, with the same character and the same happiness. So uh, we always say it's very good to be the third most peaceful country in the world. We only have Iceland and New Zealand in front of us. Um, this is a very good motto. Uh, but it's more important that people, the 10 million of Portuguese, really realize how important this is and receive people um, in, every, in the same way. So as I told you, the strategy has um, a working plan. We have numerous actions, uh, and I think it's very uh, interesting to see that each of the axes I told you has specific actions and plans um, as I said previously, touches all the territory and touches tourists, locals, and workers. Uh, and we have goals. Um, and sustainability, uh, we have decided to put, of course, goals in terms of economy, uh, ambitious. Uh, just to give you an idea, we have two goals. Uh, 2017, we will finish with around 58 million bed nights in Portugal. We've decided to grow until 80 million in 10 years, but most important, to move from 14 billion euros of revenues a year to 27 billion revenues a year. Uh, so more than double the number uh, of, um, of revenues uh, in a year. Uh, but the economy is important, uh, and it's uh, uh, a very strong part uh, of, this, of this discussion. But social and environment is more important for us. And that's why we've decided to put three goals in terms of social uh, responsibility and social sustainability for Portugal. First, reducing the seasonality in three points. So uh, we have a target to reduce the seasonality from 37.5 to 33.5% in 10 years. As we say, seasonality is the biggest enemy of employment and of tourism careers. So we're committed in reducing these points. We've, we're getting there. Uh, just to give you an idea, 2017, 60% of our growth was in low season, which is very helpful for us. Um, so this is, this is quite a nice uh, and a good objective. But there are two more. Um, as I told you, qualifying human resources. 60% of human resources in Portugal have basic scholarity, so until nine years of scholarity. We've decided to change that in 10 years. Uh, and we're committed in having 60% with um, high school or professional teaching, 60%. The third one, um, and this is something very important for us, especially because we've, we've, we've seen many examples of how tourism um, can develop uh, this kind of stressful situations with the inhabitants. Uh, and we've decided that uh, for us in Portugal, in our cities, 90% of our population has to be happy with the tourism, touristic activity, especially in the cities. So 90% uh, of locals uh, have to perceive tourism as a very good activity for their lives. In terms of environmental, much more simple and much more uh, direct. In 10 years, 
uh, we want nine out of 10 companies uh, that work in tourism, so hotels, rent -a cars travel agents, tour operators, uh, animation, nine out of 10 adopting uh, measures of uh, energy efficiency, water efficiency, and um, waste management uh, efficiency. So, uh, ambitious. We're committed with this. Uh, we're not hoping uh, not to be here in 10 years. This is not just for, uh, for the paper. Uh, we're actually working for these measures actively. Uh, with the companies, with the private sector. Uh, we have regular meeting with all of them. Um, and it's very, very important uh, to measure all of this. And that's why uh, one of the initiatives um, that we took recently is the development of a network of regional sustainable tourism observatories following the uh, UNWTO recommendation. This will support uh, the management of our tourist destinations, both at the regional uh, and the local level. So uh, these uh, observatories, uh, and I'll tell you, uh, we, were, we were launching, uh, we launched, uh, we delivered the first application uh, to one of these observatories, the Alentejo region, the south of Portugal, for those who don't know, interior too, um, has already been submitted to the NWTO INSTO network, um, and we hope to be able to extend this participation um, to other regions. Um, these uh, observatories will work very closely with, uh, with us, with Tourism of Portugal, um, and we will support them with a business intelligence system that includes sustainable tourism indicators. So, uh, very briefly, uh, this is our uh, ambition, these, these are our goals. Uh, we believe uh, we, can, we will get there, uh, but surely, and, and we're happy to say that we believe also that we will be more, much more successful if other countries, uh, I won't say will follow us because we're not leaders, we're leaders in what we want to be, not uh, in the countries, um, but at least if we can share the experience, if we can share the knowledge uh, that we've developed will be very profitable for our sector, for our activity, uh, and most of all for uh, everyone uh, in the world. So thank you so much for the opportunity, uh, and I'm glad to answer any question that, if, that anyone has uh, later on. Thank you. We, we thank uh, deeply Mr. Araujo for such interesting presentation, and I'm sure there will be questions at, at the end of this, of this session for you. So thank you very much, and um, I would like to move on now to our next agenda item, which is the role of national tourism policies and observatories with, in accordance with what you just uh, mentioned, Mr. Araujo. So as the committee members know, the UNWTO International Network of Sustainable Tourism Observatories, we call it INSTO, is a network of tourism observatories monitoring the economic, environmental, and social impact of tourism at destination level. The initiative was, is based on UNW's UNWTO's long-standing commitment to support sustainable and resilient growth of the sector through measurement and monitoring, uh, fostering the evidence-based management of tourism. As of December 2017, the International Network of Sustainable Tourism Observatories includes 21 observatories worldwide committed to regular and timely measurement of the destination level. Assessing and monitoring tourism's contribution and commitment to the SDGs at destination level and advancing timely and systematic, moni systematic monitoring of tourism impact is being accomplished through uh, the work of these observatories. Uh, in some cases, the observatories are part of a national sustainable tourism strategy, such in the case of Mexico and Indonesia, in which observatories are a main national policy instrument supporting the implementation of their national tourism policies. The next presenters will share their extremely interesting local and national experiences in this regard, so that lessons may be learned from them. So uh, I would like to invite Ms. Maria Teresa Solis Trejo, Under Secretary of Planning and Tourism Policy of the Secretariat of Tourism Sector of Mexico, who will present us the case of her country. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, it's great for us to have an opportunity to be here sitting with the members of this committee and with all the attendees who, who are joining us today. I have a few, a few slides for you. And I would just like to, to mention, in continuation to, to the presentation on Portugal, that the 2018 was really a game changer for tourism policy in Mexico. This uh, international uh, year for um, a tourism, a sustainable tourism, uh, has really made an impact in Mexico with the uh, awareness that was, was created and we have been working in uh, different uh, initiatives to support uh, tourism as an agent of, of positive change in, in our country. So our observatories are also uh, heading towards including uh, metrics on uh, sustainability. Up to now, the metrics in our country have been focusing mostly on the economic impact of, uh, of tourism. And now we are definitely uh, making a joint effort with all the destinations to have some baseline <coughs> measures on, uh, on sustainability and the uh, the last year we had uh, this administration just as an example of, of this uh, new or renewed commitment of our country to our sustainability. The number of natural protected areas in, uh, in our country in the last, uh, in this administration, the last five years, has uh, quadrupled. So it is really, uh, as I was saying, a game changer in the, uh, to the development of the tourism industry. Well, the a few slides that I presented is basically a, focusing on what we are doing with regards to a, observatories, tourism observatories. As we all know, a, tourism observatories are an instrument or a tool if a, a, to generate high quality information on the tourism and the, in order to provide decision makers with this, the information they need for, for decision making, both in, on the private sector and the, and the public sector. As you will know, there are a number of initiatives uh, around the world creating these observatories. Uh, I don't know who's controlling this. Here we are, just a few examples. We have uh, the examples of Croatia, the Sustainable Tourism Observatory, also the Tourism Observatory in Bogota, in Colombia, and the, the Regional Tourism Observatory in Umbria, in Italy. And basically, this means an organizational commitment towards uh, developing this high quality information, which is accurate, consistent, timely, reliable. Uh, the creation of systems for compilation and uh, analysis. The, exchange of information among the public and private sectors, and the strengthening of uh, planning capacities and communication between also these uh, public and private entities. Uh, as an example in, in Mexico, the most uh, developed uh, observatory that we have in the country is that of the state of Guanajuato. They started in 2004 creating this observatory and uh, it uh, has focused on creating this transsectoral interdisciplinary analysis with a number of organizations, including, of course, private se uh, public sector entities, uh, universities, and other specialists interested in participating. And they organize, uh, uh, monitor, measure, and evaluate the uh, evolution of the tourism sector in the state of Guanajuato. Um, in the next slide, we have the current state of uh, observatories in the WTO. The number is 21 observatories, which are um, located in, in these countries, as you may see. In Latin America, it's Mexico and Brazil who have their observatories uh, registered with the WTO. And I understand there is a number of other observatories that are in line to also become part of the uh, WTO. 
Uh, all these uh, observatories are spread around the world. In the case of Mexico, if I mentioned the, the case of Guanajuato, we have a big challenge because we have, we have identified 44 um, priority destinations in our country, and as you know, we also have 111 smaller locations that we uh, designated as uh, magical towns. And that this means uh, a huge challenge because for all these destinations, we need accurate, consistent measurement. So uh, what uh, the federal government has been working on is precisely in stand standardizing uh, the measurement we have um, a system we created um, in the last decade, we created a system that we call Data Tour, where we mon monitor um, hotel um, and accommodation uh, figures, statistics for hotel accommodation. And we also have the Tourism Atlas, where we have a geo-referenced uh, information for the, for the tourism sector. But we, in, in Mexico, in the tourism sector, we know that we are not alone. We have a very strong statistical institute, the INEGI, the National Institute for uh, Statistics and, um, and Geography. And we have a team that the Ministry of Tourism has been working very close to the INEGI. They have, along the years, created the national system for uh, economic um, and geographic uh, statistical and geographic information. And we have been working with them in the last two years to create uh, an offspring of this system, what we call the National System of Statistical and Geographical Information for the Tourism Sector. And uh, this is a, an effort where we are uh, trying to make sure that the information that is generated in, uh, in different areas of the country in our destinations is consistent and is aligned in uh, at different levels. On the one side, we need, of course, to have consistent methodologies that uh, generate this um, reliable information. We have procedures and methodologies, but also we're trying to align technological efforts. In many cases, we have different platforms that do not talk to each other, so we're trying to uh, collaborate with INEGI, so we have one a repository for information that each one of us can use for their own purposes, but that also the observatories can eventually uh, generate information and be consistent and be um, located in this uh, general platform. And uh, also we are, um, we have an initiative uh, right now in Congress to make this national system for statistical and um, geographic information for the tourism sector an obligation by law. So this, we hope, uh, up to this date, we only have the, this data tour system, we have the tourism atlas, but we don't have the obligation as a ministry to create this general consistent uh, information uh, system. So in the last uh, one and a half years, as you can see in the slide from 2016, we first uh, had um, a diagnostic on what the needs of information are, the needs detection diagnostic, and then we have an, in Mexico, an inform we have 32 states, and each of these states has a state uh, minister for tourism, and they overlook the, the development of tourism in, in that state and in their destinations. And they have an association with whom we have been teaming up, and in the last uh, one and a half years, we had uh, four workshops in different parts of the country. We're trying also to work on our human resources to upgrade the, the quality of our human resources. And they have this common language uh, and the common methodology so we understand what we are talking about. We have been working in, uh, in, in this sense. And also in creating this platform with the INEGI and the Ministry of Tourism, the SECTUR, so we can uh, have, and we are having a common system that we have uh, at this point in, uh, in, a beta, in a beta stage. We are testing this uh, system, and our goal is that for the next Tianguis Turistico, 
which will be in the month of April in Mazatlán, we will be able to launch this national system for statistical information, uh, statistical and, and geographic information. So uh, the idea is that we have this strong basis of uh, statistical and economic information that uh, can serve as uh, an anchor for all the observatories to generate information, to provide information to, but also to have all these observatories using and uh, doing independent analysis uh, on the impact, positive and not so positive, of tourism in each of, the, of uh, their destinations. Um, as also as a similar uh, effort to that of Portugal, in the last year we have been working as a result of a peer review of tourism policy made by the OECD in 2016, in which we had Portugal and the U.S. as peer reviewers for the tourism policies in Mexico, we came to the conclusion that we have to build a long-term view for a country that is um, supported by all the stakeholders in the country. So we have also, we had uh, four forums uh, in the last year where we are creating this very, very long-term vision. Of course, we're hoping to have uh, metrics for 2030, but we are trying to create a 2040 uh, vision for the country where we can also start working from now in the new products and the capabilities in the country and in our human resources for a new generation of, of tourism development in, in Mexico. We're hoping to have this document presented around the month of March, and we'll be able to, to share it with all of you. And uh, continue, uh, this vision is nothing without strong um, numbers, strong statistics, strong goals, metrics that can really uh, help us identify, identify if we are reaching those ambitious goals or we are uh, uh, lying behind. So thank you very much for, for the opportunity and also I'm open for any comments or questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Solis. And now I would like to invite uh, Lorna Hartiangio, Hartiantio from the UNWTO Secretariat who will present on behalf of uh, Indonesia their experience uh, in the, the uh, Sustainable Tourism Observatories as well. Um, I you. apologize for the way I pronounce your uh, last no, name. It's good. I'm sorry, Lorna. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Um, I work for the UNWTO. Today I have the honor to address you on behalf of Dr. Franz Tegu. He's the Director of Tourism Infrastructure and Ecosystem Development of the Ministry of Tourism of Indonesia. And the main objective of this presentation is to share how the sustainable tourism observatories at destination are supporting the implementation of the national tourism policy of Indonesia. On this slide, we have illustrated the foundation of the Indonesian Ministry of Tourism's approach to sustainable tourism. In recent years, Indonesia has put forward tourism policies to advance sustainable tourism along its cultural, environmental, and economical dimensions. Concepts such as sustainable consumption and production and poverty alleviation are closely linked and provide the baseline for sustainable tourism development. In Indonesia, the core elements of sustainability are forming part of Law 10 of 2009, which mandates that tourism shall be intended to increase economic growth, improve people's welfare, eradicate poverty, overcome unemployment, preserve nature, environment, and resources, promote culture, raise the nation's image, foster a sense of patriotism, and strengthen international relationships. As shown on the screen, the policy framework for tourism development includes also guidelines and standards, which are all rooted in sustainability principles. The guidelines for sustainable tourism destination from 2016 are particularly relevant 
These guidelines are supporting the development of national strategic tourism areas and national tourism destinations across Indonesia's vast territory. There are three main national policy instruments that Indonesia is promoting to trigger action at destination level. These instruments are the Sustainable Tourism Destination, Sustainable Tourism Observatories, and Sustainable Tourism Certification. The first instrument, the Sustainable Tourism Destination concept, is aligned with the issue areas identified within the UNWTO indicators publication of 2004, and also following the recommendations of the GSTC criteria for destination with regards to sustainable management, economic, social, cultural, and environmental aspects. Up to date, over 80 destinations have developed their own destination level plans with financial support from the Ministry of Tourism or Development Agencies. The development of these plans is following a participatory approach for tourism planning that engages local communities, the private sector, and relevant government bodies aiming to create common platforms that address the diverse set of needs and concerns. This participatory exercise has provided stakeholders a sense of commitment and responsibility, thus facilitating the transition to implementation and monitoring phase of these plans. The second instrument, the Sustainable Tourism Observatory concept, is directly linked to the monitoring of sustainable tourism impacts at destination level. In this regard, Indonesia has prioritized a scalable approach which starts, which starts with the establishment of regional or local level observatories, the STOs, through the signature of MOUs between the local authority, an academic institution at destination, and the Ministry of Tourism where the commitment of the destination to monitor sustainable tourism is described. When reporting from the STO is presenting evidence of the sustainable management of tourism resources and activities within their destinations, the established STO then have the opportunity to become recognized at the national level and becoming part of WINSTO, which stands for Wonderful Indonesia Network of Sustainable Tourism Observatories. As the last step of the ladder, when performing optimally, the observatories have the opportunity to be recognized internationally by being proposed by the Minister, Ministry of Tourism to be integrated within the UNWTO International Network of Sustainable Tourism Observatories, INSTO. The UNWTO INSO network has therefore become an incentive for national observatories to continuously improve their performance and is also an integral, integral part of the national tourism policy. At present, there are 11 national observatories, out of which five are members of the UNWTO INSTO network. And they are Lombok, Pangandaran, Sleman, Toba Island, and Sanur in Bali. The third and last instrument is the Sustainable Tourism Certification concept, which is embracing the previous two instruments and focusing on the recognition of the efforts of the destinations with regard to sustainable, sustainable tourism management and product development. In a nutshell, training programs for assessors are taking place so they can evaluate the performance of destinations and products according to a set of criteria. Once the evaluation takes place, the destination and products fulfilling this criteria can qualify to receive the Indonesian Sustainable Tourism Award. The Indonesian Sustainable Tourism Award is therefore a set of tools to assess the qualification of destinations, implementing and applying sustainable tourism indicators and measurements. And it also represents a competition of sustainable tourism products proposed and implemented by private and the public stakeholders who have decided to join forces for the benefit of their destinations. Oops. So far, the application of these three policy instruments destination, 
of these three policy instruments, which are destinations, observatories, and certification, is supporting the Ministry of Tourism in the implementation of its national policy, and therefore Indonesia expects to continue, continue following this strategic approach in the years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lerner, for this uh, presentation of the Indonesian experience in the observatories. I move on now to item eight of our agenda. And uh, I would just like to mention that as committee members uh, are aware, UNWTO reports biennially to the, the UN General Assembly on the promotion of sustainable tourism, including ecotourism, for poverty eradication and environment protection. It is thanks to the collaboration from our member states that UNWTO is able to periodically prepare substantive uh, reports to monitor progress at the local, national, and global level and to make recommendations as a basis for drawing up tourism development policies and strategies. So I would like to call for attention of all of you uh, or fellow members about the preparation process and key deadlines for submissions of your inputs for this report in 2018. Uh, so now I would pass the floor to the Secretariat for uh, the presentation of those uh, timelines. Thank you, Madam Chair. As you see here, UN headquarters uh, is for us in the tourism sector. Um, then every two years, as Madam Chair just explained, uh, a place where the tourism sector can show its responsibility and accountability and demonstrate uh, through the report uh, what has been done, but also addressing the additional needs for the future. Um, what we wanted to show you here is first, this is how the report looked like in 2016, which was prepared based on the input we received uh, by the Secretariat, presented by the Secretary General uh, from the UNWTO to the Secretariat, and then became a report of the, Secretari of the Secretary General of the UN to the General Assembly. The next step here, you see that the report which is prepared then is followed by a resolution. And this resolution text is actually what we want to encourage you as member states to actively form part in the negotiation of the text. Here's how you shape outside of the tourism sector and in the tourism sector an agenda and this opportunity is coming up in 2018 once again. At the end of February, we will reach out to member states, our focal points, the ministries of tourism, and invite member states to transmit back to the Secretariat for the elaboration of this report, uh, the ideas, the strategies, and relevant documents. The Secretariat will then work on the report, and by the 13th of June, has, uh, July, has to submit this report on behalf of uh, the membership and the secretariat to the UN. Then, very important, and especially for those who are not present here today, don't miss the opportunity to see and engage through the discussions in September, very likely, in New York with the missions to ne start negotiating the resolution text. It is a unique opportunity. Finally, in December, you will see that the UNGA will adopt the, rec uh, the meeting reports, resolutions, and decisions of the second committee. These are the timelines. These are the opportunities. The documents are available on the website of UNWTO. And uh, we thank you for using this opportunity and supporting us. Thank, thank you very much for this information. And um, I would just like to encourage one more time uh, all my fellow ministers and colleagues to provide the, the information, to provide the timely inputs um, so that this report uh, 
can, can really represent the commitment of our sector. This also uh, allowed the Secretariat to prepare a substantive and meaningful report and also to share and disseminate the outcomes documents of relevance, such as the report itself and the subsequent UN General Assembly resolutions. Uh, for the drafting of the report, apart from the responses to the survey that, uh, that the Secretariat sent to us, UNWTO incorporates also agreed priorities, actions and recommendations from major, com major conferences and uh, their outcome documents. One of these is the Medellin Statement on Tourism and Air Transport for Development, uh, the outcome document of the Joint World Tourism Organization, in an international civil aviation organization, ICAO, High Level Forum on Tourism and Air Transport for Development. This was held concurrently with the 21st session of the UNWTO General Assembly in the city of Medellin, Colombia in September 2015. During the reporting period of the previous uh, UN General Assembly report prepared by the UNWTO Secretariat in 2016, uh, the Medellin Statement was one of the major outcome documents resulting from high-level events. The other one, was the Beijing Declaration on Sustainable Tourism as a Driver of Development and Peace, the outcome document of the First World Conference on Tourism for Development organized by the Government of the People's Republic of China and the World Tourism Organization in Beijing, China, on between the 18th and 21st of May in 2016. The Medellin Statement was focused on fostering closer cooperation and dialogue between the aviation and the tourism sectors in line with the sustainable development goals. The Beijing Declaration also included the pledge to advance the contribution of tourism to the achievement of the 2030 Agenda and the sustainable development goals, in particular, goals 8, 12, and 14, and duly recognized tourism as an important tool for poverty eradication, development, conservation, and peace. As we can see, these outcome documents play a very important role in the preparation of the report. So one more time, I really invite all my fellow ministers to reserve time and resources to be present uh, when the resolution text is formulated and negotiated in New York. I recall that in our past meeting in China of this committee, we also insisted in our fellow members to um, do the job also with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to make sure that uh, we create the space to include our items in all uh, of those that are discussed at that level. So one more time, this is the opportunity to make sure that our, our issues and our, our contributions are taken into consideration at the, General, at the UN General Assembly meeting this year. Um, well, this is the moment to thank all the speakers for the high quality of your interventions. And now I would like to open the floor to all of you present here today and uh, invite you to have a brief, but I'm sure <laughs> interesting debate or your contributions to the different um, themes that have been presented to you here today by our uh, guest speakers and members of the committee. So now the floor is open. If any one of you would like to address any of the members of the committee or um, speakers, this is the moment to do so. Thank you very much. I'm Anel, I'm uh, from Mexico. And Luis, I have a question for you. We have a big problem in Mexico in our natural areas. Uh, the, the people is destroying and there's no control. Uh, you were talking about people, no? That's the, the, the uh, very important element for the for 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 the tourism. But how do you think how, how we should control those areas? Because that's that is is getting worse and worse. Luis, please. Yes. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Um, it, 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 uh, I would say the simple answer is education, uh, training, education. Um, you have the pro that problem. We have 30% of our territory is preserved, so you can't do anything. Uh, it's a good thing 
it's a, a good active. We're promoting cycling and walking on our beautiful parks and everything. Uh, but then we have tourists that behave differently uh, when they're away uh, than when they're at home. And we have uh, locals that throw garbage and things to, the, to these areas. So I would say education. We're, we're doing that. We're working uh, on tourism. Uh, the, the problem that we have is we're very transversal. So we can force uh, the Ministry of Education to uh, teach uh, the value of tourism uh, to young children of five years old or six years old, but they can teach them that it's important to preserve these kind of areas, uh, that the future, not only the future of the, the planet, but their future depends on how well preserved they are. So I would say education. It's, uh, in our case, uh, we're working and building on top of that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luis. I would just like to add to that also a um, small example of our experience in Colombia where we, uh, we are approaching 20% of our territory as protected areas through the national system. And um, it is a challenge all over. But uh, what we are finding is ways to work together in a partnership with the environmental ministry so that tourists entering these protected areas will also contribute so that we can reinforce the protection of the area. So tourism should also contribute economically to strengthen that force of, let's call it like guards that we have within the areas, which will never be enough, but we have to work towards that. So I think that is also a way where tourism can turn around from being, as you say, um, um, affecting the environment to produce some resources that will strengthen the protection of the, of the areas. Ms. Maria Teresa also wants to add. Yes, I would like to just make a brief comment. Uh, what we see, not only in our country, but in other countries, is that the biggest, uh, the largest predator of nature is poverty. In Mexico's natural protected areas, we have three million people living in them. So what we, and what we see is that the predator is not tourism. It's actually illegal logging, illegal fishing. So what we need to do there is actually uh, take advantage of tourism to generate uh, low or non-impact activities in those areas that can give uh, the population who lives there an option to preserve and an incentive to preserve and to help us look after those uh, natural protected areas. And that we are doing, for example, in the Sea of Cortez. Uh, we are working with the Ministry of uh, Natural Resources to convert fishermen into uh, observation, nature observation guides, and uh, that is the way to go. Thank you very much. Uh, another question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jeff Lippman, um, and I have a question. Maybe it's to you, Luis and Maria, but it extends to everybody. It's clear to me that we are moving into an era where measurement is becoming the magic word. And if you look at these sustainable development goals, it's not just 17 goals, which we've seen indicated here, but it's 169 targets and it's 304 indicators. And there are smart groups all over the world, like this one, who are developing their own variants of what these measurements are. And I am predicting that in the next two or three years, we are going to become measurement mad. And as we become measurement mad, one of the issues that Lewis mentioned, and, and I noticed you, Chairperson, we looked at each other together, you said you wanted to get nine out of 10, um, some sort of indicator of consumer satisfaction. And I have a, a comment and then the question. I think if we just have numbers of a variety of good things, which we keep reporting, which go into an assembly resolution, and I won't say this publicly, but which is half prepared in-house, by you probably, Dirk, um, where we run the risk of preaching numbers to ourselves. 
it seems to me that what's missing is the correlation between the good things, however you want to identify them, and the bad things. And how, what mechanism is in place other than observatories to accentuate the good things and to reduce the bad things. That, I think, is management. But I don't, and, and actually we, I've been working in the World Economic Forum to define some sort of compact concept that we call impact travel, where you're forced to look at the good impacts along with the bad impacts and, and to be able to identify where you have, obviously you can't correlate them, but where things are beginning to get out of step. And particularly, if I may say, when you're looking at a strategy for 2040 or, or so far into the distance when we know that everything is going to change. And this is where I see there's a gap. And if I could you know, ask views of the panelists, but suggest to you, Dirk, that there's a real need to see if you can bring these good and bad things together. Otherwise, you're just going to be producing mind-boggling numbers. Thank you very much, Mr. Lipman. So, um, did you expect uh, the answer from the panelists, or we leave it as a comment? No, I would love to have an answer. <laughs> I'm searching. I, I would only like to mention in that case um, how important this committee said in previous meetings that timely reports become, because that is the way where the management can actually do something regards what's been uh, becoming a problem for sustainability. Because the first thing we realize is that uh, in the past, these measurements reports will happen, let's say, a year after or two years after. And then to act on that, it's probably too late. However, if these observatories allow us to have information, uh, well, wishfully, immediately, but as soon as possible, to have a close monitoring and timely reporting on this is when we can actually do something um, before it becomes a real problem. So it helps us, you know, try to be, it's going to be difficult to be ahead of situations, but at least to be on top of them, if that makes any sense in, in regards to, the, to some of the specific points of uh, reporting and monitoring and having the data. have as their objective and their mission to actually be looking at this timely data and identifying in, a, in an early sense, hey, we've got a problem here. I think that's what the, the, the observatories network is actually doing, but I will let my, my colleagues to add to this. Uh, I don't want to monopolize that. Yes, I think we are aware that 2040 is too far. And um, nevertheless, we are also seeing that this lack of a long, long-term vision is what is causing us problem in some destinations. For example, Cancun. When it was created, it, it was thought to have 12,000 rooms. It has over 30,000 now. And uh, because that uh, exponential growth uh, wasn't, uh, and they have uh, 60,000 rooms in the region. So because that growth was not uh, considered with a long, long-term vision, what is happening is that the local, uh, the public services are insufficient. Uh, so the private sector has taken care of building hotels and resorts, but we haven't had enough public resources to create hospitals, schools, and the water treatment plants and so on. So at this stage, we're trying to regenerate these uh, mature destinations and uh, solve the problems that we didn't look at uh, 40 years ago. So uh, what we're trying to do with this is smart, and these links, at the end of the day, everything is connected. These are magical towns and uh, are smart destinations which are becoming one. They are making this effort, and at the bottom, I think we have a, a, a governance challenge because this is, goes beyond the work of uh, administrations and politicians. 
We have a, our jobs for, in case of Mexico at the federal level, it is for six years, but we need somebody to look at the long-term development of the destination. And there we need the private sector and, and, and the, the social sector, those people who live in there and who have their children and their grandchildren living there. And uh, we have created these uh, governance arrangements where we, where we have committees that are uh, social, private, public committees that are deciding what is going to happen to this area in 40 years and what kind of zoning and uh, planning do we need to make sure that not only there is a growth, but an orderly growth that uh, generates development and an inclusive development. So I think uh, if, uh, yes, we're looking at numbers with the observatories, those numbers presuppose that we had this governance exercise where the community decided what kind of future it wants and it can have depending on its territory because there is this territory component without which no development is going to be possible. Can I just, can I just make one, one comment? Um, I, I agree with you. Uh, numbers by itself mean nothing. I mean, they're very useful, uh, especially when they're good numbers, because we come here and we're all happy and uh, our governments are happy. Um, but you have to start somewhere. Uh, and this is, this is the perfect start. Of course, there's the, uh, the back of the office related with all these numbers, which are uh, the important part. Uh, you gave a good example. Um, one of our goals is to have nine out of 10 inhabitants in Lisbon and Oporto, which are biggest cities, happy with the with the activity. Um, the, last, um, the last survey we did in Lisbon, we were around 85, 84, 85% of people happy with the activity. We still don't have tourismophobia or gentrification or anything like that. But we've identified three problems or three wish issues that were like yellow lights, so we're working on that. Uh, if we didn't have the 85, we would never reach them and talk to them. Uh, and we're working with them in these three areas, uh, garbage uh, disposal, uh, jobs, because uh, lots of companies closed or shops or whatever. Um, and the third one is uh, security. So these are the three issues. Uh, so we're working with them in terms of see what kind of programs should we develop, uh, what kind of ideas can we implement to add something to your uh, to your uh, opinion, uh, I think it would be, and I hope these observatories would be useful also in trying to bring together with the numbers some ideas or case studies or examples of what has been done uh, in Mexico or in Spain or whatever to attack that kind of, of issues. Uh, but I think that's the work of the observatory and that's our work in terms of reading the numbers and seeing what can we do to improve them. Can I just make one comment? 40 years is too long. I identified it. Actually, the real target, which hasn't been shown today, is 2050, when the climate issue has to be resolved because of all of the items which have been identified for indicators, that's the one which is existential. So if we don't fix that one, all of the others are meaningless. So 40 years is a decent time frame. Thank you very much. I'll move on to the following question. I had the, the, oh, okay, I'm sorry. There's the lady here. Okay. Hi, I'm Caroline Ungersbach from the Sustainable Tourism Partnership Program from South Africa. And we work um, together with uh, educating smaller SMMEs to try and adopt um, sustainable tourism principles. South Africa, as you may or may not know, we've got responsible tourism standards. There's 41 criteria, and we're trying to get businesses to get into it. And um, it's a pity the lady from Indonesia isn't here because they, they're pushing and promoting um, uh, certification. And what we've noticed in South Africa 
is that we used to have 500 odd um, certified establishments and it's now there's only 75. And it's the issue is actually lack of education and also the cost. So um, it's a nice to have, but the hotel groups and even the smaller uh, establishments, they just can't afford to actually get certified. So um, a PhD that my partner did was actually looking at the difference between certification and tourism grading. And um, what came out of, of her PhD was actually that they want to be acknowledged in the tourism grading. So if you get a three-star, four-star, five-star, whatever, you can also get acknowledged um, on, on the green efforts that you are actually making. So um, it's just a pity that uh, uh, Indonesia is not there. But in Africa, most of the tourism businesses are, are real micro businesses and SMMEs. And um, that's where the lack of education is because everybody wants to open up a guest house, everybody wants to have a bit of accommodation, everybody wants to do catering, everybody. So we also, what we do in, in little towns where there's like eight or 9,000 people, we do a complete assessment of the towns and what can actually be absorbed and what needs to be created um, to make that a, a great tourism destination. But it's like hard work. But it's the certification that is really um, the question that I wanted to ask. So I don't know if other countries are doing that. I think Maricruz would be um, the, the, the right one to, to provide some information on this uh, quality certification since uh, she's here on behalf of ICTE. Um, let's see how I can contribute to your, to your, to your comment. I, I can uh, share with you the experience we have in Spain. I'm here as a representative of affiliate members, but I work at, uh, as technical manager at the Spanish Institute for Quality and Tourism. And it's true that uh, especially uh, small and medium companies are afraid of certification. When you talk about certificates, it's like, oh my god, it's uh, burdens or uh, bureaucracy. But we have to understand, or we have to make them understand, and we have to be able to communicate that at the end we are talking about uh, well about tools I always talk I prefer always to talk about tools better than about standards and certificates I always try to transmit them that these tools which comprise uh, for example sustainable uh, criteria or criteria for sustainable tourism for employees, for improving the, the quality, uh, quality uh, conditions for employees, um, waste management, etc. They, uh, they are just a reference tool that will help them and that, we, and that they have to adapt those tools to their reality. This is not easy to explain. And first of all, not all companies are able to understand this because not all companies are prepared, are ready at that step to go to the second step. So we have to be clear and we have uh, to accept the reality. Uh, certification maybe is not for everybody, uh, but it is uh, without doubt a tool for um, awareness, for promoting this sustainability in this, uh, in this case we are talking about, or another goals we, are, um, we have in our tourist strategy or policy. So, Thank you very much. I, I would also add that um, as governments, I think we have a responsibility to share how important um, uh, the sustainability standards regardless of certified or not, become to a company. And what, uh, in, in our case, what we did, we had what we call weeks of quality. So we would go around the different country, uh, the different parts of the country meeting with the business people and having real examples of how implementing uh, sustainable behavior will impact their cash register. And we had examples of hotels, medium, I don't know, 50, 150, 200 rooms hotels that could prove after a year how $6,000 were, were saved from their energy uh, bills. So things like that get the people more enthusiastic about implementation of, the, of these standards. Because at the end of the day, we keep saying, if conservation doesn't 
provide <laughs> improvement of the people's condition, conservation becomes something very utopic or ethereal, and not everyone has the same level of commitment. So it's good when it comes um, hand on hand with uh, also economic improvement for the people. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to answer one of the questions that Jeffrey made, uh, so that it stays on record. We don't prepare draft of resolution for the United Nations. The reports that we make, as uh, I understand uh, uh, you know, because you, you know the work that we do as UN a specialized agency on tourism, we gather all the inputs from our state members and the outcome declaration from main meetings, and we submit this report to the General Assembly of the United Nations. And then this goes into the second committee. The United Nations General Assembly has six committees. The second committee is the one that handles the negotiation of this. First, the review of the report, and then the drafting of a draft resolution. And that's why we call on our member states to participate actively, because any member state can lead this preparation, can prepare a draft resolution, find a group, sponsors, co-leaders of this. There's an intense negotiation. It is open to all UN member states. And then there is also a report that I have the documents to prove it here. Our report conclude with a section on recommendations, basically based on the challenges that our member states have expressed to us, the challenges, the progress, what they want to see, what new issues. So we prepare the report. These are used, but many times there are many other issues that our member states consider important to include. So this is the basis. There is a negotiation. And the beauty of this process and mechanisms for negotiation is that there is a report of the second committee in which you can find highlighted who led the preparation of the resolution, who cooperated, who voted against, how this was approved, so that this everyone, every member state that participate is having the opportunity of contributing to policy making on tourism. So we, our team that's not prepared the draft policies, and we again, as Madam Chair said, encourage all our member states to participate actively on this. Thank you. I appreciate uh, those, those um, precision remarks that you just made. Thank you very much. Um, is, if there is one more question on the floor we can take, because I would like to keep the meeting according to the time allocated. Yes. Just I would like to, I'm Marcello Notariani from SMA Tourism, based in Australia. We have uh, worked for many years about uh, um, observatory and uh, what we call a sustainable tourism model. I think connecting what Jeffrey said before, I think the next step will be what we say before management, but we call, uh, it's like uh, when you adapt your management. So adapting management, uh, we need uh, to do activity that we can measure. Um, for us, um, it's, uh, it's, it's very challenging, but uh, for us, it's uh, our objective is to measure every three months, every three months, the basic indicators for four pillars about community, about economy, about, uh, um, uh, about uh, um, environment, and about also the visitor experience. So these are for the four pillars that we are using. And uh, uh, the, the challenge are two. Basically, there is a, a very much gap between uh, collecting the data and also using the data. Okay, and the second one is also it's it's uh, that the the manager are not prepared to use this data, and sometimes the data are not useful to take the decision, the right decision. And the second problem important is to to have a, at least a, a budget to implement what you call adaptive management. Because otherwise, it's something that uh, stay in the air. And we focus too much sometimes in the methodology, but not uh, in the real implementation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and this way, well, we, we would like to thank uh, each member that uh, participated in this open meeting today, um, our second experience, and um, hopefully uh, this will become another tradition within 
this uh, uh, important FITUR meeting that uh, our sector has every year. I thank very much the Secretariat for their support in organizing this uh, committee, all my fellow committee members and um, experts that shared with us today. Just to conclude a, a little recap on what we, we, we had here today in this meeting, um, first of all, we mentioned how important was this past year of International Year of Sustainable Development, uh, uh, Sustainable Tourism for Development as a tool to raise awareness and also to um, bring together all the stakeholders towards this, which is um, not a one-year celebration, but that is really our DNA. As, as a sector, but I think what uh, was achieved in this past 365 years, uh, days, was very important. <laughs> that was very important in, in um, opening all our eyes about how important we, we can, we can uh, become to improve the livelihood of the people of our different countries, with the tourism being the, the most important tool. Um, we also mentioned um, uh, the set of ideal stage for the tourism sector to reflect on its role and embark on a common journey towards 2030, a journey guided by the uh, SDGs, obviously. We also learned about how work is actively being progressed in order to further promote the value and contribution of sustainable tourism to development. And uh, the meeting highlighted uh, to our member states the next milestone in the context of the sustainable development agenda, including the importance of ensuring proper global follow-up and also suggested ways to fully use the potential of the high-level political forum on sustainable development through the voluntary national reviews. Uh, this is the central follow-up and review mechanism within the United Nations system. The meeting also encouraged members to participate uh, on each and every important SDG-related platform in order to integrate the needs, the challenges, and opportunities that the implementation of SDGs present to the tourism sector. Uh, also reflected, on a, uh, reflected and identified main implementation challenges and constraints, lessons, uh, lessons learned, I'm sorry, and the way, the way forward including policy measures and actions needed to accelerate the integration of sustainable consumption and production patterns in order, in order to, uh, for the tourism sector to be both competitive and sustainable. We learned about the important work of the INSTO observatories and how they are positioning themselves as a functioning model for ensuring that tourism uses its full potential as a contributor to sustainable development, as an initiative on its own, but also as a part of national tourism policies. We have also reflected about the importance of an active participation of the member states through the UNGA reports, which allows the UNWTO to be more uh, cognizant of members' needs and challenges. It ensures ownership of the report and of its uh, consequent um, resolution on, and to ensure that the relevance of its work is really maximized. Overall, these are uh, really opportunities for us to, to have a, a, a more substantial impact and to contribute to the global sustainability agenda through work that is a country-led, people-centered, we, we mention here very often, and also we're looking for a major participation. So um, uh, just to finalize, I would like to recall <laughs> what Mr. Araujo said where people has to be in the center of any sustainability strategy. Inclusiveness of tourism, I think that is what we are all looking for at the end of the day. The, of the day. And uh, Mexico's long-term vision, which 2040 is not long-term enough sometimes, but it puts us as a good um, extent to, to try to be on top of what we need to do as our priorities. And I also think what you mentioned about how strong data is necessary to support uh, the impact and the, 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 uh, the contribution of our sector to general development. Um, nevertheless, it's important to, to remind you of the date, the, the 13th of July, 2018, to present the reports for the UN General Assembly and also hopefully meet again, be present at the General Assembly in September 2018. Um, I don't think 
overload of data or statistics uh, is going to kill us yet. I think we need to really use it um, in, a, in a way that it will give us the necessary tools for a better management of our tourism. So with this being said, I would uh, uh, conclude uh, this meeting officially. And I, once again, I just thank you all for following us through the streaming and also for being with us here one more time in Madrid in this uh, public audience of the Committee on Tourism and Sustainability. Thank one more time to the Secretariat for the contribution and also the fellow members of this committee and special guests. Have a good evening. Thank you.